Can you believe it, do they? That, what, what, that February is already gonna end? February's already all done. I know. That's so crazy. Yeah. It went by so fast. Wait, super, wait, wait. Super what? Edgar. What? Does that mean that since February is already gonna end? Yeah, no more Valentine, no more. So that means no more love? Oh. Hmm. No, no more love. No more love. I see them kids, Agape Avenue, we're happy to spend this time with you. I see them kids, such a wonderful day, to learn what the Bible has to say. I'm glad to see all my friends, and to know that Jesus' love won't end. I see them kids, we're glad you can stay, today's going to be a very awesome day. Uh, no, we still have to yeah, love of course Edgar. You do, because That's crazy. Was, uh, the Bible verse, John 13, 34. Mm -hmm. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have with you, mm -hmm. so you must love one another. Well, that's still in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. It's so, still a command. So we have to do it all the time. All the time. 24-7. Yeah, 24-7. Mm -hmm. 365 days. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, well, that's true. That's well, you know what? so smart. Maybe we should figure out how people going to do it. <gasps> You're right. Okay, let's, okay. let's do that. Let's okay. figure it out. Okay, okay, let's do it. Okay, let's go. Okay. Hi, hi everybody. Hello. Um, I have my friend. I have my friend Sharon here. She's so pretty, right? Look at how cute. <laughs> it's my friend Sharon. What school you go to? New Harvest Christian Academy. <gasps> That's so fabulous. Oh my goodness. Sharon, I have a question for you. What is it? I want to know. What what's brotherly love? Brotherly love is you have to love your neighbor and love your enemy, and you have to love your family. Oh my goodness, even your enemies. Mhm. Mm yes. Because you have to forgive them. You have to pray for them, for they can be good. Wait, wait. I have a real question, Sharon. Are what is ready? it? Are you ready? What's the difference, right, right, between mushy love, like <laughs> like that kind of love, or and like brotherly love? Well, brotherly love is like. What I told you about, like loving your neighbor, mm -hmm. and then wishing love is you have to get married, and you have to get married, and also you have to like, like have to mush. Oh, so once you're married, you can do mushing love. Yes, and so you, you have to get married, like with your your husband or your wife, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I get it now. That's so crazy. You're so awesome, Sharon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, well we'll see you guys later. Bye bye. bye.
everybody to another episode of Professor Witherspoon's Wacky Word of Science. And I have with me here my assistant Michelle. Hello! <laughs> okay, today Michelle, we're going to show these wonderful children how powerful magnets can be. You have a magnet? Yeah, right here. Right here. Oh, <laughs> now there it is. Now on the table, we've got some nails and some screws and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. Michelle, that magnet is a special construction magnet. Oh. And it's used for picking up nails and screws and other metal on a construction site. Let's show them how it works. Okay. Oh! Oh, oh my oh, 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 it's moving it. It's powerful. That is such a strong magnet. Now. Do you know this, ladies and gentlemen? How the metal is drawn to the magnet. Yeah. It makes me think about our verse. Really? Why? Well, our verse is John 13, 34. Mm -hmm. A new command I give you to love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. When we show brotherly love, it draws people to Jesus. Really? Just like this magnet, draws the metal, we can draw people to Jesus for using brotherly love. So brotherly love is like a magnet. You're so clever, Professor. Well, Lewis. thank you, Michelle. Wow. Now, you can be a magnet for Jesus too by showing brotherly love. Hello, everybody. I am here with my friend, Diego Mendez. Oh. Diego. What school do you go to? New Harvest Christian Academy. Well, we have a lot of kids from New Harvest Christian Academy. Diego, what grade are you in? Fourth grade. Now, Diego, here's a big one. A big question for you. Yes. Would you like to hear a joke? Yes. Oh, you would? Okay, great. Okay, Diego, what do you call a dog with no legs? I don't know. What do you call a dog with no legs? It doesn't matter what you call him. He ain't going to come. <laughs> That's funny. That's Is that funny? <laughs> I thought so too. Thanks, Diego. You're a pal. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. So sad. I've been hearing these crazy oh, things oh, hi, about Avery. you. Hi, What did you hear? That you're gonna be a superhero. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Oh my oh, goodness, why is that's that so, so funny? crazy. What's gonna be your superpower? Boring people to death. Oh, <laughs> I believe that God has given me the power of brotherly love. <laughs> brotherly love? That's ridiculous. Oh my goodness. What? You're gonna love us to death? <laughs> oh my well, goodness. Well, I know that's it's gonna so be lame. hard, but I'm gonna try my best. And remember what our verse says? Oh. A new command I give to you. Love one another. As I have loved you, you must love one another. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't wait until you fall on your face. <laughs> it's okay, Avery. I'm going to love you, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ugh, whatever. I'm out of here. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. She just doesn't get it. I had to pray for her. Mm -hmm. Okay, hello, everybody. I am here with my friend Sophie. Yay, Hi, Sophie. Sophie. <laughs> Sophie, what is your last name, Sophie? Lucette. Husak. Husak. What, That's cool. Sophie, what grade are you in? Kinder. Kindergarten. What's the name of your school? New Harvest Christian Academy. Oh, Sophie goes to New Harvest Christian Academy. That's wonderful. Sophie, we've had a holiday this month, right? <laughs> what, what, what holiday did we celebrate? Valentine's Day. Oh, you are so smart, Sophie. Sophie. What is a, what is Valentine's Day all about? It's about love and caring about others. Love <gasps> and caring about others. Just your friends? Mm-hmm. What, yes. what about people who are not your friends? You gotta love them too? Yes. Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about your dog? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Do you have a dog? Yeah. What's your dog name? Peanut. Peanut! Oh, that's a wonderful name. That is so dog. cute. Well, Dofi. Thank you so much for coming and telling us all about Valentine's Day. You did a great job, Sophie. 
Will you come back this year again? Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, we'll see you later. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Thank you so much for being with us here on Agape Avenue. I love it when you come to visit us. We've been working on John 13, 34. Why don't you say it with me? Are you ready? A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Now remember, we discussed that that Bible verse is in red letters. Jesus is talking. Now, the kind of love Jesus was talking about in that Bible verse is a love called brotherly love. And I was studying my Bible and I found the best story about brotherly love. It's found in Luke chapter 5 and it starts with verse 17. And it tells about a time when Jesus was at Peter's house. Peter lived in a city called Calpurnium. And while Jesus was at Peter's house, so many people came to visit Jesus. And they wanted to hear what Jesus had to say, and they wanted to see Jesus do miracles. Well, four men were there, and they were coming to see Jesus, and they were carrying another friend on a stretcher. This friend was paralyzed. His legs didn't work. He couldn't walk. So they were carrying him on a stretcher. Well, when they got to Peter's house carrying their friend, they looked and they saw how crowded it was. There were people everywhere, hanging out the windows and the doorways, wall-to-wall -wall people. And they stood back and they said, man, how are we gonna get him in to see Jesus? Our friend needs Jesus. Well, one of them looked up and said, guys, let's take him through the roof. Now, we don't know how they got him up there. It couldn't have been easy to carry that stretcher and their friend up onto Peter's roof. And they decided they were going to put an opening in the roof. They were going to make an opening in Peter's roof. And we don't know how they did that. If they had the tools to do it or what it did. All these guys knew was that their friend needed Jesus. And they were going to do whatever it took to bring their friend to Jesus. The Bible says that they made the opening in the roof and they lowered their friend down and he came down right in front of Jesus. Jesus looked up and the Bible says that Jesus was moved by their faith. Not the crippled man's faith, not the handicapped man, their faith. And he looked at that man and because of their faith, he said, your sins are forgiven. Well, there were some religious leaders there, and they didn't like that Jesus told this man that his sins were forgiven. They said to themselves, who does he think he is? Only God can forgive sin. Jesus said, why do you say these things to yourself? What's easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or take up your mat and walk? Well, to show you, that the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins? He looked at the man and he said, take up your mat and walk. Well, the Bible says that his legs became strong and he got up, rejoiced in the Lord, picked up his mat and went home. Now we know that this story has a lot to do with that miracle, but the part I really like was the brotherly love shown by those friends. They had a friend who needed Jesus, and they were gonna do whatever it took to get their friend to Jesus. If that meant carrying him up on the roof, if that meant making a hole in the roof, if that meant having to come back and fix Peter's roof, whatever it took, they wanted to get their friend to Jesus. That is brotherly love. That's the love Jesus commands us to have. How many of you have people in your life who don't know Jesus? If they don't know Jesus, they need to. All of us need Jesus. You and I, we all need Jesus. What are you willing to do to get your friends to Jesus? 
And there's lots of ways you could do. One, you could flat out tell them about Jesus, who Jesus is, and how Jesus died for them and came back to life for them. You can invite them to visit you and would come to you to children's church or maybe to vacation Bible school to or another activity at your church. Whatever it takes, we need to put Jesus' words into practice. Because remember, it's a command, a new command. I give you love one another. And when we take our time and we bring our friends to Jesus, no matter what it takes, that's putting Jesus' words into practice. Our friends need Jesus and it's up to us to love them so much, we bring them to Jesus. We are so happy that you're here with us today. Isn't it great to have them here? It was so much fun to have them. I'm so glad that they, they watched us today. We want you to know how valuable you are. They're very, very important to God. Very important. And He loves you so much that He sent His Son to die for you. Now, if you're here watching and you've never asked Jesus into your heart, it's very, very important. And it's also kind of easy. Now, I have Pastor Paula here with me, and we're going to show you what you need to do. We're going to say a prayer, and if you will repeat this prayer after me, you're going to ask Jesus into your heart, and he's going to wash away your sins and give you another chance. So I'm going to pray. You repeat like Pastor Paula does. Are you ready? Let's pray together. You say, Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for coming to earth. Thank you for coming to earth. Dying for me. Dying for me. And coming back to life for me. And coming back to life for me. Now come into my life. Now come into my life. Please forgive me for my sins. Please forgive me for my sins. And send me your Holy Spirit. And send me your Holy Spirit. To help me. To help me. Live for you. Live for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For giving me another chance. For giving me another chance. And washing away my sin. And washing away my sin. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you just asked Jesus into your heart. And you know what? If you did that, give us a message here at ICM Kids Online and let us know that you asked Jesus into your heart. Oh, do they. I am so proud of you. Of me? Yes, of you. And how you stood up to Avery. Oh, thank you. It's because she just needs a lot of prayer. Yes. And she needs friends because she doesn't get it. Well, you know what? I think it's going to be pretty hard. Mm -hmm. But I do think that is your superpower. <gasps> you think so? I do. And you're going to show everybody here on Agape Avenue how to show what do we love. Aw, thank you so much, girl. Yeah. I'm excited. I am too. I'm so, so excited. And you know what? I can't wait to see how we're going to show what did you have all year long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't wait. Well, I can't we'll, wait. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. I got family. Bye-bye. That's so crazy. Hello, everyone. We're so glad that you're watching our episodes. We love you guys so much. But remember, if you're watching us, make sure to take a video or picture and tag us at ICM Kids or ICM Laredo. Also, don't forget to hashtag us at ICM Kids. We'll be reposting your videos or photos on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> if you have any feedback or ideas that you'd like to see on Agape Avenue, make sure to comment them on our Facebook and Instagram page and we'll be doing them for you. Bye! Farewell! See you later! We love you! Bye!